America's healthcare advocate, Carrie Hall. Hello, America. Welcome to America's Healthcare Advocate Show, broadcasting coast to coast across the USA here on the HI Radio Network. My producer behind the microphones, Mr. Darren Wilhite, behind the camera, as always, Mr. Dave Thiessen. All these shows are posted on 15 podcast platforms and YouTube. YouTube numbers are up to about 450,000 now, thanks to all of you out there in the audience. We appreciate you watching the show as we videotape these and put them up. We also appreciate all of you listening on radio. 238 affiliates across the country. I want to say hello to all the folks in Lubbock, Texas. We're very happy to have them on board. They've been on board for a while. We get calls and emails from folks down there, and we're happy to chat with them. So once again, we appreciate you at America's Healthcare Advocate for having us on the air in Lubbock, Texas. If you're chronologically challenged and you're looking for Medicare insurance, whether it's a Medicare Advantage plan or Medicare Supplement plan, the lovely Carol Lee Steele at RPS Benefits by Design is happy to help you anywhere in the country. You can call them uh, at 877-385-2224. That's 877-385-2224. And if you're an employer looking for health insurance, Maria Ollers at RPS Benefits by Design is the person you want to talk to. You know, I just spoke to her yesterday and they just did a case for 400 McDonald's employees. So, and these were franchises happen to all be in Texas, by the way, that they are going to do health insurance for. So they can help you anywhere in the country, whether it's employer sponsored group health insurance, or you're looking for Medicare, individual health insurance, ACA, 877-385-2224 is the number at RPS Benefits by Design. All right, today's show, which I've been looking forward to doing, I'm going to title this Working on the Business, Not in the Business, because in studio with me today is Chad Simpson. He is the CEO of GNA Partners. They are a PEO. We're going to talk about what PEOs do, and I'm going to tell you why I think this is extremely valuable, especially for the small business owner. So we're very happy to have you. Welcome. You came in from Texas today to do this show. We appreciate having you here. Thank you. Thank you. Quick correction. I'm vice president of sales. Oh, well, uh, I made you the CEO. You CEO, just got a, pro- he got a promotion. I got, I, he well, didn't even know this was going to happen. I got a little bit of anxiety with that as well. <laughs> that, that, that's a much bigger job than, uh, than I have, but no, thanks for having me. Thanks for uh, ordering some cool weather. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little hot in Texas. It, it is. It, you know, it's August in Texas. If you live in Texas and yeah. you don't like the heat, you need to move. That's usually how it is here, but we're very fortunate right now. So yeah. hopefully yeah, hopefully nice. it'll stay that way. For, and uh, you're going to eat some uh, Kansas City barbecue today. See how that compares to North to North Texas barbecue. We'll see. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'll, uh, I like it all. <laughs> all right. So, Chad, why don't you just start out by explaining what a PEO does um, and, and the functions that they handle for small business owners that allow them, as I said, to work on the business, not in the business. Chad? Sure. A PEO stands for Professional Employer Organization. That's a mouthful. But the the concept has been around for several decades. It kind of started out, there's a, a couple of accountants in South Florida that realized if you could lease someone employees, you could also take their employees and lease them back. So the concept came out of employee leasing. And then it became something you know way bigger, way more complex. Um, and the primary goal of all of it was when you look at small businesses, you got to think about everything that a small business has to do, right? There, there's their core mission. So it could be a nonprofit. It could be a doctor's office. It could be a machine shop, right? They didn't get into business to be employers, but they typically have employees because by uh, law, the Department of Labor has a very narrow definition of someone that is an independent contractor. So in this day and age, most of the time, if you have a small business, you're going to be forced to classify people as employees. And when you do so, you get 180 federal employment laws, 180 plus federal employment laws, and there's state regulations, local regulations, there's tax issues and everything that comes along with that. So for the small business owner, that can be very overwhelming. And so you can categorize, categorize them into three categories. They're either ignorant and willfully ignorant and have been you know, in business for years and nothing bad has ever happened. They've been right? really lucky. They've been really lucky. You've got those who have a, a firm grip on it, they feel, but they're investing in that. So they have employees that handle that. So someone who handles HR, someone who handles benefits. And then you have those who are more... 
outsource minded. They think of a kind of running their business from a lean perspective, meaning we're going to have employees, but we'll have as few as possible and we're going to outsource things that aren't core to our mission. So normally those are the people that we're looking for because they've kind of already decided that there's certain things that we have to do that we should do, but we're not good at them. Well, you know, and this is daunting, you know, because I, I had, you know, when we had Benefits by Design, which was our company, which is now part of RPS Benefits by Design, you know, we had about 15, 20 employees, depending on on what time of year it was, where we're at with doing Medicare, whatever the case may be. And, you know, handling all of the regulatory um, responsibilities, 188 federal laws. And here's the thing that I don't think people understand you're guilty until proven innocent when the federal government walks in your front door. When the Department of Labor comes in and says, we're here to do an audit because you didn't handle your 401k correctly or you didn't you didn't do this correctly or that correctly, you're guilty. They'll find a crime to fit, to fit, to fit why they're there one way or another. Um, and I have example after example of people that had small businesses. I had one business that was a, a, a manufacturing facility. They did all of the railroad t- signs you see that posted for railroads. When they came in to audit their 401k, they were there for three months. Wow. Three months, okay? And and they and there was nothing wrong with the 401k, but they still fined him $11,000. I never will forget that because him he and his wife ran that company, and his wife was responsible. And the level of stress that they had to deal with as a result of that. And, and like I said, you know, ignorance, you're not knowing doesn't mean anything as far as these people are concerned. Yeah. They're, they're from the federal government sure. or the state government, and they're there to tell you that you're wrong. And here's what it's going to cost you because you are wrong. And the other big issue <laughs> is um, you're, you're in a position where you don't know what your rights are. And you think that if you go along with them, that they're going to you're going to get the best outcome, right? So it's like, I'm going to try to comply with their request, but they'll make requests that are outside of what you're obliged to do by law, meaning for an OSHA audit, for example, all that you are required to give them are your OSHA logs, but they're going to come in, they're going to ask for way, way, way more than that. So you see how that works. Number one, if you're a small business owner, I I don't know what they have a right to and what they don't have a right to. And I feel like if I am nice to them because they'll be nice to me, but they're really, they're really, uh, you know, have an ulterior motive that it's all going to work out well. And then, as you mentioned, they're going to have to come up with at least enough of a fine to cover their cost for being there. Right. So, and, and to justify the fact that they're there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and to justify their existence, because that's what this really is all about. Yeah. And, you know, not trying to poo poo OSHA or Department of Labor or IRS or whatever. They, they serve a purpose, but it's David and Goliath, and you're always going to be in the wrong in some way, shape, or form. And you're always going to be yeah. David. And ignorance isn't a defense, right? No. So, yeah. and and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this today, because, you know, how many of you out there listening to this or watching this on the, on the YouTube or listening to the podcast know there are 180 federal laws that you are required to comply with if you have W-2 employees? That's the whole point. And if something happens where they come to your business, they audit you for whatever the reason may be, if you don't have someone that understands this and can stand in for you and cooperate with them, do what they want you to do at the same time, make Make sure you're protected as the employer and they're not fishing, which is what they do a lot of times, then that's what you're up against. And so that's why I think it's important to do shows like this and why we're doing this today. And, and the idea, again, is to bring you information so you can make decisions that are going to fit your business. And as I said, do you want to spend your time working on the business or do you want to spend time working in the business trying to solve these kind of problems that are outside of your purview? And that's the reason why Chad's here with us today. And that's why we're going to talk about PEO. So when we come back to the break, we're going to continue the conversation. But we're going to shift gears now. We're going to talk about customer service. This is one of my favorite pet peeves is customer service in today's world. And the fact that the word customer has gone completely out of service in terms of customer service. We come back from the break. We'll talk about that, why that's important and why and how they handle it at GNA Partners. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after the break. You're listening to America's Healthcare Advocate broadcasting here on the HI radio network, coast to coast across the USA. If you want information on GNA Partners, go Go to the website gnapartners.com or you can call them at 713-784-1181. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after the break. The golden rule. Treat others as you want to be treated. 
I'm Steve Keeker, and this is one of the founding principles of my firm, Senior Care Consulting. Since 2002, our value statement has included, honor our mother and father, respect our elders, care for those in need, and treat your family as our own. We've been honored to help hundreds of families make one of the most difficult decisions they could ever make, serving them in their greatest time of need. If you're looking for someone who can provide you experienced and objective guidance when searching for a senior care community, reach out today and discover the services of Senior Care Consulting at 913-945-2800, 913-945-2800. Know your options and choose with care at SeniorCareConsulting.com. Welcome back. You're listening to America's Healthcare Advocate Show, broadcasting coast to coast across the USA. As I always say, all these shows are posted on the 15 podcast platforms. We're on Spotify. We're on Odyssey's platform. We're on iHeartRadio's platform. We're on a whole series of these things. Rumble, you name it, we're probably on all of them. So you can always get us on a podcast platform, America's Healthcare Advocate, or you can go to the YouTube channel and watch the show because Dave Thiessen, our producer behind the camera, puts all these together and they're up on the broadcast platform on YouTube. so You can actually see the show. So here's the deal. Maybe you're that small business owner and uh, you know, you're the one that's struggling with these issues. You've got a partner. Instead of trying to explain all this to the partner, have them go watch the YouTube They'll get, a real, they'll get an education, and we, we cut this thing down to about 38 minutes, 39 minutes when we put it up on YouTube. So you can do that. They can listen to it, and they'll get a clear understanding of what PEOs do and most specifically what GNA Partners does. So in studio with me, Chad Simpson. He's the VP of uh, GNA Partners. They are a PEO. So in, in as I was getting doing show notes this morning, about 5 o'clock in the morning, I'm going through your your list of things to talk about here. And on there is customer service. I'm like, oh boy, this is one of my favorite topics. So, you know, it's really funny because I, I say there is no service in customer service in this country anymore. It's like out the window. I'll, example, I had to change some tickets on Delta Airlines this week. It took me an hour an hour after I went through at least five voice prompts because they want you to do a text chat. They want you to go online. I don't want to do it. Te- I'm 75 years old. I'm not interested in doing a text chat or going online. I'm interested in getting a human being on the other end of the damn phone and telling them, here's my problem. Help me fix it. Once I got to the customer service rep, they were amazing. Did everything I wanted done. Couldn't have worked out better. Sent me an email, had my itinerary in it, done deal. But to get there, was like pulling teeth. How do you guys handle customer service so that when people call, they actually get to talk to a real human being? Yeah, no, it's it's a great question, and it's something that I I've been thinking about a lot lately. Everyone talks about how great their customer service is, right? So it's it's something that no one believes anymore because their personal experience. It doesn't matter. And I think a lot of it happened after COVID. At least with me, I noticed that. Uh, because the, the economy just changed. Right. And so your your favorite local restaurant, it, it's never been the same since. And when you start to think about that, like GNA Partners has always prided ourselves on our customer service. Family-owned business for 29 years. And when you think about, you know, a publicly traded company, there's a vote, right? The, the street determines whether they're doing their job. If they hit their quarterly number, that's the vote. Does the stock go up or down? So... When you have a, a, a privately held business, it's your customers that decide that, right? And if they- Or ref- you're not in business. Or you're not in business. You. And so <clears throat> when when we get referrals, that's the biggest indicator that we're doing a good job. Before I get into kind of how we objectively measure that, um, the reason I bring that up is we're in a business that's highly competitive. There are a lot of companies that do what we do. There's a lot of POs. There's a lot of companies that do payroll and, and just HR uh, outsourcing and things like that. All of us say we're going to do a better job than the incumbent, or we're going to do a better job than you know somebody else that you're talking to. Um, but there's a major trust factor for that small business owner. So the small business owner, that's their baby, right? It's it's it's, it's, it's everything. Most of them, a lot of them, don't even have a retirement plan. Their retirement plan is I sell this business. Thank you. Right. So it's it's their everything, and we've got to convince them that we're going to take really good care of their baby, and that that's a that's a. It's a big thing to overcome 
and, and build that trust. So we objectively try to measure that with our current clients. We have about 5,000 clients. We service about 100,000 worksite employees all across the country. Been doing that for 29 years. Um, but don't take my word for it, right? We want to be able to show them. So one of the things that we employ is called Net Promoter Score, NPS. And while most people haven't heard of NPS, well, I know at least exactly what yeah, it is. Yeah. At least the consumers, though, <laughs> when I explain it to them, I'm like, oh yeah. So it, you know, it's really just a simple formula, but it can be as simple as um, happy or sad face when you go in the the bathroom at the airport. Like I see that little screen. Like was it clean or not clean, right? So all you're trying to do is get an up or down vote out of someone, and the the way we do it is we'll send out a survey via email and send to our clients, and it says on a scale of zero to 10, how likely are you to refer GNA to someone else? And if they want to complete the second question, it's why, okay? So if there's a quantitative and then a qualitative. So really we're looking at the quantitative first, and the way the formula works, you take the percentage of promoters, and a promoter has to be a nine or a 10, so that bar is extremely high. I don't know about you, but when I fill out a survey, if it's zero to 10, I'm thinking, yeah, maybe a seven or eight if you're pretty good, right? So to get a nine or a 10, that's an extremely high bar to start with. But the detractors, anything from a zero to six is a detractor. So more than 60% of the options are detractor scores that count against you. So we've got less than 20% of the options count for you, more than 60% count against you. The sevens and eights are considered passive. They get tossed out of the formula altogether. So to give you an example, if you had 100 respondents and you had 60 that gave you a nine or a 10, you had 20 that gave you a seven or an eight, you had zero or 20 that give you a zero to six, your net promoter score would be 60% minus the 20% detractor. So you end up with a 40. So your net promoter score is a 40. That scale goes from minus 100 to plus 100 because you could get 100% negative or 100% positive, okay? That was a lot of information, short amount of time. But the point of the matter is, on a scale of zero, or excuse me, negative 100 to positive 100, a 70 is considered world class. So MPS is a universal thing, a lot of companies use it. Companies like USAA Insurance have 70 or above, world class. That is GNA's goal, to be a world class service organization. We hit it occasionally, um, but we typically stay in the high 60s, which means that we're one of the best service companies in the world compared to others. And we're at the top of the echelon when it comes to POs. The part that's important about that is that you are, you're measuring it, you're paying attention to it, and, and it's not just something you're talking about. You're actually doing it. You've got a metric. We do the exact same thing at the Tego, the TPA that I own part of. Um, with my three partners based in Omaha. We do exactly the same thing. We have a giant tote board that's up in, when you go out our offices, it shows you how many calls are active, how fast they're being answered, how many are resolved, how many are being sent over to a claims manager, customer service. That's how, so we're doing the same thing you're doing. It's interesting because not a lot of companies do that. First of all, they don't want to pay for it, okay? Because it isn't cheap, okay? But secondly, the, the what comes out of that is you improve your staff. You know where you're having problems. Oh yeah, it's the the negative <coughs> feedback is what we're seeking out. That's what like, you want to find. We know we know what we're good at, but we we all have blind spots, right? Right. So we can't improve unless we're getting the feedback. And I always say I would rather you tell me if I'm doing something wrong versus telling my competitor who's calling on you trying to convince you to leave me, right? Yeah. I mean, we got to be honest with ourselves, and then we can improve upon it. Yeah. And so that and, and that's critical. And so I think this is a big separator because the large PEOs that are out there don't necessarily do this. And they see, there's a lot of churn and a lot of turnover. I've been, you know, a recovering broker for 26 years now, and I've worked with a lot of PEOs, and I know how it works. Um, and people go in there because they think that it's going to work, and they're going to save money, and they're going to do this, and then they find out once they're in man, I can't get anybody to help me. We've got this problem. we got that problem. The difference with you guys is, like you said, you're a family. You're mirroring the very people you're trying to help. You're a family-owned business. So you've got skin in the game here. You're not, it's not, it's not what's the quarterly earnings report. It's a little different deal whenever you own the company and it's your baby, like you just described. So I think that's important. I think that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get Chad in the studio today to talk about that and to show how they separate from the rest of the herd. We'll be right back after the break. When we come back, we're going to get into what services do they offer. We're going to talk about it so you understand what they offer. You're listening to America's Healthcare Advocate, broadcasting here on the HI Radio Network. 
Network, coast to coast across the USA. We've got more. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You're listening to America's Healthcare Advocate Show, broadcasting coast to coast across the USA. All these shows are posted on our 15 podcast platforms and on YouTube. If you're not listening on the radio today and you want to go up and search it out, America's Healthcare Advocate. Also the website, americashealthcareadvocate.com. If you have a question to comment, send me an email. I do answer each and every one of them. I get a lot of them, but I do answer them. So please feel free to send me an email if you have a question or comment. If I can help you with something, I'm happy to do that. Please feel free to do that. My producer, Mr. Darren Wilhite, behind the microphones, Dave Thiessen, is the man behind the camera as we bring this show to you today. In studio with me, Chab Simpson. He is the VP of Sales for G&A Partners. They're a PEO. They're located in uh, the Dallas, Texas Metroplex, but they service folks all over the country. And we're very happy to have him in studio. Flew up here today to be with us. We're talking about what does a PEO do? How do you work on your business, not in your business, if you're that small business owner? So let's get into the menu now. What what all do you provide? Um, How much of that do they have, you know, what do they have to buy to get in the door? How much of that it, it can be a la carte? You know, what are the services? So just kind of roll through that, will you, Chad? Sure. It can get a little bit confusing because it's a very saturated marketplace when it comes to HR outsourcing. There's companies that just do payroll, um, and there are hundreds of those. Yep. There are hundreds of PEOs. There are companies that give HR guidance, compliance, salary surveys, you name it. Um when, when we came into the marketplace, we came in as a PEO, professional employer organization, and our goal is to do everything soup to nuts for the small business owner. So that is a platform that is our primary platform. So we're seeking out the business owner that says, look, I probably can do this, but I don't want to do this, not quarter my business. And if I'm going to outsource it, the reason I want to bundle everything together, number one, one throat to choke, right? I, I want you guys to do it right. I'm going to pay you for it and expect it to get done. Uh, but the other reason is things, it's very complex. I mentioned earlier, 180 federal employment laws, you have taxes. If you're piecemealing stuff out to multiple vendors, you're doing certain things in a house, you're doing payroll over here, you're doing uh, OSHA training over here, uh, workers comp over here, things fall through the cracks because no one's no one's communicating, right? right? You assume that things are getting done and they're not, and you don't know that they didn't get done. Like I've had clients who, move from another payroll provider, one of these big national companies, and they get a notice two years later that they did not have, they don't have a quarterly filing for their payroll taxes from two years ago, right? That That's extremely common. And then of right. course, the former provider says, not my problem. That was two years ago. You're no longer a client. Can't help you out with that. Right. So the PO model is, you know, payroll, everything associated with that timekeeping. Um, it's going to be HR, HR guidance, handbook, it can include risk and safety. Some companies, you know, if you're all white collar, you probably don't need a lot of that. You're blue, blue collar, you need a little bit more. And then just the HR. And so HR meaning the employee relations side of things, right? So there's kind of those buckets there. Employee benefits would fall under that. So health insurance. Health workers insurance, comp. workers comp. But what makes GNA different is we do not like have to take over workers comp. We don't have to take over the employee benefits. Most PEOs use that as a loss leader. Oh yeah, right. So they'll either they either go after high risk workers comp classification, someone who's about to get locked out of a job site because their experience mod is about to jump up, so they can roll into the PEO, lock their mod. A lot of PEOs operate that way, and those are usually smaller regional PEOs. More what I would say, honestly, they're kind of predatory. Uh, they're not really providing service. It's just hey. You're out of other options. You're going to have to pay us in order to right. get into our high-risk pool. Um, you have other PEOs that will use the medical plan like that. They, they will claim they have economies of scale to buy health insurance, which we all know does not exist. Uh, that's that's by contract through the carriers with the networks and the providers. And it's, a, and it's all federally controlled now. Correct. It, no longer is the marketplace what it used to be 10 years ago. Yes. Obamacare changed all of that, both yes. on the in, individual side and on the small group side. So all of that comes together. The other problem is, in my experience in the past, is it's a lot easier to get into some of those PEOs, especially the big ones, than it is to get out. When you try to get out, it can get really ugly. So yes. a little bit about... And, that, and that's what we tell people going in. So we're, we're, we're benefits agnostic. We're workers' comp agnostic. That doesn't mean we don't offer those. We have our own master medical plans where we can commingle risk together. Same thing on the workers' compensation side. 
But because we're agnostic, we're it's really a litmus test for us to test the client as to what is their commitment level to PEO. It, are they interested in HR help? Or are they trying to save a quick buck? If they're trying to save a quick buck, we're not the PEO because you don't make money in the first year. You're just still getting to know each other. You're trying to stand up their platform. You're trying to basically fill in all the gaps in their HR infrastructure. Uh, there's a lot of heavy lifting that the PEO does during that first 12 months. So we're looking for a client that's going to be with us long term. So if we win them on the medical, we'll probably lose them on the medical as soon as somebody comes in with cheaper medical. So that's another reason that we like to be agnostic. We also like to allow the client to respond to the market. You know, through carrier consolidation, there's only a handful of carriers left. Yep. And they it's cyclical as to who's selling and who's buying year to year, right? <laughs> so we don't yep. want to lock our clients out from that. So if if United's buying and we're we have a Blue Cross master plan, and for some reason they can get a really, really good deal and they understand it's maybe a short-term deal, but they need it. Let, let them have that. We'll still work with them and do the payroll, do the HR, the Benefits Administration. So it is HR forward what we do. Uh, we're really there about the client experience, the compliance, and making sure their employees have the look and feel of working for a larger organization as it relates to just the, uh, the employee life cycle experience. I'll give you an example. Someone called me off the radio show last week, a major corporation that had a COBRA issue and didn't know what to do. And I'm like... You're, I'm not going to mention the company, the brand, they're a national brand. And I said, you don't know how to handle it. Well, this person's claiming they've got COBRA benefits and we let them go and, and we don't know. I said, you didn't do a registered letter to them that said, here are your COBRA benefits, you have to opt in. No, they hadn't done it. That's the kind of thing that you guys do. Um, if, if you're handling the health insurance benefits, you're going to handle the COBRA. OK, right. and, and they didn't even know that they had a responsibility to do this, which floored me, really. If I named the company, you'd fall over because you wouldn't believe it. But they didn't know that, that they had that. Their lawyer called me and they did not know they had that problem. They're like, well, you do. And here's what you better do. Okay, Here's how it gets resolved. So it's the it, it, it's back to that ignorance of the law. Ignorance of the regulation is not an offense. If and they're going to be out, this guy's got a big ER claim. They're going to wind up paying it. There's no way around yeah. it. That's what I'm talking about. So you're there to protect them from whether it's health insurance or workman's comp or whether it's an OSHA issue or, you know, it's another issue with Department of Labor. That's what you guys are there well, to do. Well, and help, it, it maybe isn't the right term because under the PO model, it, it's the ounce of prevention. It's right? with the pound of cure. And, and I try to explain this to people. So we have other models. So PO requires co-employment. And that means that we become the administrative employer of record. Right. And what that does is that gives us the ability to perform these tasks on behalf of that employer. Uh, it, it's it's something, you know, greater than a power of attorney, but we can we don't have to have co-employment in order to perform a lot of these services. So we can still perform payroll and, and help with a, a handbook and COBRA administration and those types of things because sometimes people aren't comfortable with co-employment. Right. We don't want to walk away from them. But what I try to, to get them to understand is even if they don't do co-employment with GNA, the reason they still want to do that with us versus someone else is the people that perform those services are the same people that are performing them for the PEO, meaning our employees, right. those subject matter experts. If they screw it up, we have 100,000 employees. You know, the fines are always like per, per employee per day. Right. Well, if oh, we yeah. mess something up in our processes, we don't perform something correctly, then we're going to get fined times 100,000 people. So guess what? We don't mess it up. You're pretty you're pretty motivated. Correct. Correct. So if you're working with someone that's not a PEO and, and you're you're outsourcing these things to them, not only will they try to wash their hands of it like, hey, you're you know, it's not Your our problem. problem. Yeah. Um, they're probably more likely to have problems because they don't have skin in the game. They don't have any risk involved. So we've got a great amount of skin in the game, regardless of which model you go with. You can go with an a la carte model or you can go with a co-employment PO model with everything included. You're still going to get the same employee experience and you're still going to get the same level of compliance. And that that part is critical. 
the customer service experience, the experience for your employees, so your employees know I can pick up the phone if I got a problem and I can call and somebody's going to help me. Explain the benefit. How do I handle? I, I, I just got a, a form from the insurance company that says they're not going to pay this. What what happened here? Yeah. Okay. How do, how do I handle that? What do I do? Th- th- there's somebody they can go to. It's not landing on the desk of somebody trying to do five other jobs inside the company, running right. with the hair on fire that right. doesn't that doesn't have time or have the background to solve the problem. That's what you do. So yeah, that's that's very very different. Every employee within our company, every subject matter expert is truly an expert. It's not somebody that they we plugged in there to fill a hole. We recruited them because they're an expert. And they're good at what and they do. And they do it like they would do it if it was themselves. And that's what we're looking for. So if this sounds interesting to you, you want to find out more about these folks, the website is gnapartners.com, gnapartners.com. You can call them at 713-784-1181, 713-784-1181. They'll be happy to chat with you. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after the break. You're listening to America's Healthcare Advocate, broadcasting here on the HI Radio Network, coast to coast across the USA. We've got more. Welcome back. You're listening to America's Healthcare Advocate Show, broadcasting coast to coast across the USA here on the HIA Radio Network. If you have a question, if I can help you with something, go to the website, America's Healthcare Advocate. Send me an email. I will get back to you. If you're interested in learning more about these folks, GNA Partners, you can reach them on their website at GNA Partners.com. That's G is in George, N is in Nora, A is in Adam, Partners.com, or if you're old fashioned, you want to call somebody and talk to somebody, they actually answer the phone there and they'll be happy to chat with you. 713-784-1181. 713-784-1181. They'll be happy to talk with you. You could actually ask for Chad if you wanted to talk to him. I'm sure he'd be delighted to chat with you. So let's talk about what is it, you know, where we see in on the on the TPA side and where we see the market having employers that are having the big biggest problem are typically employers running like 10 lives to like 150. They're, they're not the conglomos that have got, you know, like for example, Quick Trip, a great company, totally self-insured. They even have their own clinics all, all over the country where they have employees that they service. I've been to their, I've been to their headquarters. I've met with their people. I actually did a little radio with them. They got a great model. Well, they're big enough. They can do that. But if you got 20 employees, even if you've got a hundred employees, that becomes a much more difficult process. So talk about how that, what is your median mean employee look like? How does all that work with you guys? Sure. Great question. Um, and you always try to think, well, anytime you're trying to go to market with something, right, you got to figure out, you know, what is your ideal client look like? What's your ideal client profile? The ICP. With PEO, it's, it's, Kind of difficult. We already explained that they have to have an outsourcing mindset. They have to think about, well, is this this costing me money or making me money, right? Performing these functions in-house. But from a size perspective, a lot of our clients are going to be probably under 20 employees. And because a lot of times we'll talk to companies and they'll say, well, we're not big enough for you guys. You know, I only have 15 employees, right? And we'll say, well, guess what? That's perfect because the way we price is per employee per check. Okay. PEPM. Yes. And and so the beauty of that is if I have a client that has a hundred employees, now granted that hundred employee client may get some discounting because of their size, right? but they're still going to pay, you know, 10 times more than the client that has 10 employees for the exact same service. They're identical service models. That's critical to understand that. Yeah. Yeah. So when when you think about hiring someone, right, it's hard to hire part of a person. There's fractional... HR consultants oh, yeah. and things like that, but it's hard to hire, hire fractional people. So our ideal client is a small business who says, look, we need these things. Uh, we don't like running payroll through our accountant anymore. Uh, we, or the, we've run the nepotism well dry, right? I, I, I'm hiring people now that I don't really know a whole lot about. Yeah, because the second, third generation typically don't want to do the business. Yeah, these yeah. kids want to go off and do something completely yeah, different. Exactly. So... You're going to start hiring people who are virtual strangers. Uh, so when you hire people that you don't really know a lot about, you're going to bring a lot of risk to the company, right? So they could report you to Department of Labor because, you know, they they think that they should be paid hourly and you have them as salary exempt. That's just one example. So 
if you look at those, you know, small employers, 15 employees in the past, y- you wouldn't think, well, I-, I really have a lot to worry about. But now with the more regulations, the more that the small business owner. 788 federal. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So and then if we if we look at the other other side of this thing, so we have a lot of clients in that, you know, 15 to maybe 25 employee space. Um, if you get into those employers that have 40, 50, 60 employees, a lot of times they'll go hire someone because at that point for forty, fifty thousand dollars they can afford it. They can afford it. They can find someone <clears throat> who claims that they're an HR professional. HR is is a weird kind of job to have because a lot of the HR people they didn't get trained in HR. They they were put into HR, right? So they were an administrative person. They could have been working the front desk. This oh, is yeah. typical at a small business. They were hired as the receptionist, and five years later, they're the quote unquote HR person. They they've never had any HR training. They're just really good at onboarding and offboarding people. So we 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 sell against that all day long, but you usually don't win that, right? They feel like, hey, we're 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 comfortable. We have an HR person, have it covered. The ones that we really help uh, once you get above that is the 100 to 200 employee companies because they may have one HR professional who can be strategic HR. They can look at growing the organization, employee morale, and things like that while we do all the transactional HR. So one HR professional, a true HR professional plus GNA partners is more efficient, less expensive than trying to hire a team of three or four people internally to service those 100 to 200 employees. So it's kind of a bookend thing where we have smaller employers, 15 to 25, employers at, you know, 100 to 200, uh, and not a lot in the middle. Yeah, and the problem is, especially with the small employer, is they're responsible for doing all of this. If you've got 20 employees, you know, it's a husband and wife, they're running a machine shop, they got 15, 20 people on the floor, and they're trying to do it. They're trying to deal with all those issues plus grow their business. Somebody's got to go out and do sales. Somebody's got to service the client. Somebody's got to handle customer service. And oh, by the way, you're responsible to make sure the 401k is done properly. And if it's not, then in comes the Department of Labor and you're in for a big audit. The difference here with what we're talking about with you guys is you stand between them and the government regulatory agencies uh, and help them stay on track. So you're like the preventative medicine, the the ounce of prevention worth a pound to cure, right? Yeah, and what's weird about HR is it's the last sacred cow. For some reason, businesses try to hang on to it. They don't they don't have some they don't have a kitchen where they cook for their employees, right? They, but their employees eat lunch. No, they use grandma's catering right? here in Kansas City. And, yeah. and they, they yeah. don't, you know, they have somebody that comes and cleans the office. They right. don't clean their own office. They outsource their IT, but for some reason they can't get over outsourcing HR. They think that they can still be professionals at HR even though that's not what they do, right? So that's the hardest thing that we have to try to get them to overcome is like, you're not good at it. You don't know how to do it. You shouldn't be doing it. And we can do it better and for less. Well, and the other the other part of that, the other side of the coin is, you know, like you said, these people that, that, that 50 to 70 that think they've got it nailed, they think they have it nailed until the phone rings. Yeah. Okay. And they said, hi, we're at the Department of Labor. We're going to show up at your shop on tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. Or here's the better one. They don't even, they just show up. They don't even tell you they're coming. OSHA. They just show up. They don't tell you they're coming. They're, we're here for an inspection today. Boom. That's it. Okay. Uh, you know, those are the kinds of things that are so difficult for these businesses to manage because if they don't, like like you said in the earlier segment, they don't even know their rights. Do they have any rights? How do they know that? Yeah. They don't. Okay. Yet in, in, the, in the case of GNA Partners, you've got somebody standing, if you're the employer between you and whatever that agency is that you've got to deal with on a day-to-day basis. The other thing is that it helps with employee retention for people to know that you've got company in place where they've got a problem. They've got some place they can go. Yeah, totally. That you give a damn about your employees. And that's a big message in today's world because there's a huge shortage of qualified people to do almost anything in this country. So having somebody like you guys makes a big difference. That's why we do the show. That's why we do these shows. We're trying to explain to you there's a better way to do business, something that may make more sense for you. If you want to know more about these folks and how they do what they do, you can go to their website, GNA, George Nora Adam Partners, Dot com, GNAPartners.com, or you can call 713-784-1181, and they'll be happy to chat with you. You might even get chat on the phone. You can always ask for them. So, again, the purpose of doing these kind of broadcasts is to educate you. If you're a small business employer, you're struggling out there, give these folks a call. They can probably make a difference for you. Thank you for coming in today. Greatly Thank appreciate you. your coming.
And now I leave you to a thought from Albert Einstein. The one who follows the crowd will usually get no further than the crowd. The one who walks alone is likely to find himself in places no one has ever been. Remember, friends, it's a funny thing about life. If you refuse to accept anything but the very best, you most often get it. Thank you for listening to America's Healthcare Advocate Show, broadcasting coast to coast across the USA. Goodbye, America. 